Now the second group. Three types of people are discussed in these two rukus. Second, inna ladina kafaru sawaun alayhi maan zartahum amlam tumzinum la yuminun. Khatam Allahu ala qulubihim wa ala sam'ihim wa ala abfarihim ghishawa wa ala hum azabun azim. Verily those people who have denied, who have decided to be kuffar, to deny, sawaun alayhi. For them, it's equal. Aanzartahum, whether you 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 warn them, am lam tumzirhum, or you don't warn them, la yuvenun, they are not going to believe. Now, actually, here also Quran is pointing towards certain people. This is not general. So many people were kufar, had not become Muslims till these ayat were revealed, and they became Muslims later on. So it cannot be a generalized meaning. Actually, it's a particular group. Those people whom Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi had preached for 12 years at Makkah. And they had understood the message of the Quran. And from the depths of their heart, they believed that this is correct. But they didn't want to accept it. Due to their haughtiness, due to their takabbur, due to their hurur. Because, you know, they were proud. They didn't want to follow Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa Why should we follow Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa Are we inferior to Muhammad? No. Then you know this is actually when they had decided, Oh Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa it is equal. It's equally fruitless or equally without any result. Whether you preach them anymore, whether you go on war warming, warning them anymore, or you stop preaching to them or, and warning them. La yuvenun, they are not going to believe. They have decided to remain kafir. They will not accept you. Khatam Allahu ala kulubihim. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put a seal on their hearts. Wa ala samihim. And on their ears, their hearing. Wa ala absarihim jishawa. And on their eyes, there is a curtain. There is covering on their eyes. Wa lahum azabun azim. And for them is waiting a very big torment. Now this again, please note, those people to whom preaching was done, the message of Quran had been conveyed to them year after year. Twelve years, Muhammad took Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam at Makkah. Abu Jahl, Abu Lahab. It is not that they didn't, they didn't understand. They understood. Quran was in their own language. And they knew Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam from the very birth. Abu Lahab at least knew him from his very birth. But you know they had decided not to accept him. Due to their haughtiness, their proudness. So actually now such people, they will not avail of your guidance. They will not avail of the guidance of the Quran. They will not benefit all Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam from your preaching, from your warning. So it's equal to them. And because due to their refusal, to accept the truth, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had punished them by putting a seal on their hearts. This seal is not in the beginning. This seal is put only when somebody refrains from accepting the truth. Recognizing the truth that this is true. His heart tells him this is true. Accept it. And he doesn't accept. Why? Because of proudness or because of certain such reasons, haughtiness. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as, as a punishment puts his seal on his heart. Now he cannot see because there is a curtain before their eyes. They cannot hear because their hearing is also sealed. And now their hearts are closed to for any guidance. Waminan nas, now the third degree, third type of people. Waminan nas, man yakulu amanna billahi wa bil yawmi la akhire wa bahum bi mu'mineen. And there are from among people who say with their tongues, with their mouths, Amanna Billah, we believe in Allah, Wa Bil Yawmil Akhir, and the last day, the day of judgment, Wa Mahum Bi Mu'mineen, and they are not Mu'min, they are not real believers. They profess to believe, they claim to believe, they say with loud words, we believe in Allah, we believe in the hereafter, in the day of judgment, but they are not believers. Now who are they? First of all, please note, they are actually two categories who are being referred here without giving them any name. 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has not given them any title. But as far as we can understand, there are two types of people who are being discussed here. Generally people think that they are only munafiqeen, the hypocrites. But actually hypocrites as well as the Jews of Medina, both are included in this territory, in this category. And actually hypocrites were also people under the influence of the Jews of Medina. They were under their influence. And they were the shayateen, people like which we shall very presently read in, in, this, in this ayat also the word. So actually this description, as you say in English, free to whom it fits. This is a narration and it fits two groups of people of that time. Number one, the Jews. Number two, the Munafiqun, the hypocrites, who said they were Muslims, and but they were not Muslims, they were not Mormons. Why Jews? Because here you find Yaqulu amanna billahi wa bil Not bil rasul. Here the wordings are only that they say we believe in Allah and believe in hereafter. But not in the rasul. We don't believe in the messenger. At least this is not their saying. And that was the position of the Jews. Because we believe in Allah. And you, you also believe in Allah. We also believe in Allah. You also believe in unity of Allah. We also believe in unity of Allah. You also believe in the resurrection. We also believe in the resurrection. You also believe in the in the hereafter, in the heaven and hell. We also believe in the hereafter and the hell and the heaven. So we are also Mormons. You must accept us as believers. That was their claim, and it's very noteworthy that out of the three basic imaniyat, three basic themes of iman, only two have been mentioned. <laughs> They are not Mormons. And in the same way, when we shall read the description, this is this fits, you know, the Munafiqun of Medina also. Because they also actually they doubted about the messengership of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We find in the Quran at different places that they said, for example, why this these wars have been started, battles have been started. There is no express injunction in the Quran. Laula Nuzirat Suratun. Why not a surah has been, has been revealed in the Quran? And only on this demand of theirs, we find that Surah Al-Qital was revealed. Surah Al-Muhammad or Surah Al-Qital in the 26th part, which contains a very express injunction for going to war against the Kuffar. So actually, they were not very sure about the messengership or prophethood of Muhammad Sallallahu They were also, also they, they, their claim was, Iman Billah, Iman Bil Akhir. Actually, they took Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam not very seriously. And to obey Muhammad personally, that had become most difficult for them. So these both groups are included here. If you keep in view the Tawilul Khas, the groups who are in the background of these ayat. But when we shall infer generally, this will fit every Munafiq for all times to come. Because, as a rule, please understand, whenever there is some ideological call, when there is some revolutionary movement started based on some ideology, you will always find three types of people. There are people who accept the ideology at its face value, and then they are ready to die for it, live for it, to do whatever it demands. Then there are people who are opposed to that ideology. They oppose it clearly, openly, tooth and nail. And then there is the third group always, who want to support the ideology, but keep safe themselves. They want to play safe. They, want, they don't want to sacrifice their, their belongings or their lives. They want to be safe and, you know, to, be, to keep their money with them. And everything, you see, they, they, they don't want to take risks. And they actually, they want to do something good. But it should happen itself, not that we have to do anything for it and we have to sacrifice anything for it. So these are the munafiqun, the third type of people who will always be found with every ideological movement, every revolutionary movement, people who believe it, take it at its face value, they plunge into deep waters, risking everything. People who refuse to accept and who oppose it to ten nails, clearly. 
and people who are in between. La ilaha ulai wa la ilaha ulai. They are neither on that side, neither on this side. They are somewhat on this side, somewhat on that side. Meaning thereby neither on their side, neither on this side. So these are the munafiqun and this is the third group which is being discussed here. وَمِنَ النَّاسِ مَنْ يَقُولُ آمَنَّا بِاللَّهِ وَبِالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ وَمَا هُمْ بِمُؤْمِنِينَ And they are not believers, they are not the real moments. يُخَادِعُونَ اللَّهَ وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا They try to, think, to deceive. يُخَادِعُونَ I have added the word try. They are trying to deceive Allah and the people who believe, the real believers. مُخَادَعَةَ This is Baba Mufa'ala. This is trying against each other. So يُخَادِعُونَ اللَّهَ وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا They are trying to deceive Allah and people who believe, the moments. وَمَا يَخْدَعُونَ إِلَّا أَنفُسَهُمْ And they are not deceiving anybody except themselves. They are deceiving themselves. When they claim they are moments, they are deceiving themselves. When they think that they can please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through this verbal attestation only, well they are wrong, they are deceiving themselves. وَمَا يَشْعُرُونَ But they perceive it not. They have not the sense that they are deceiving themselves. وَلَا يَشْعُرُونَ فِي قُلُوبِهِمْ مَرَضٌ In their hearts, there is a disease. There is an ailment. That ailment is of doubt. Shak, rab, doubt. And this is actually, this shak and rab, then it goes to develop into nifaq, into hypocrisy. فِي قُلُوبِهِمْ مَرَضٌ فَزَادَهُمُ اللَّهُ مَرَضَى Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has increased them in their disease. This is the rule of Allah. This is the sunnah of Allah. This is the habit of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you take to the right path, He will help you in proceeding forward on that right path. If you choose the wrong path, He will help you. Go ahead. Further and further. And if you are in between, He will leave you there. It's your own choice. Imma shakiram wa imma kafura. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given the choice to you, to me, to every human being. When the decision he makes, Allah makes that way easy for him to proceed further and further. All the difficulties of the right path, they are made easier for him. All the big evils of the wrong path, for those people who choose to, to take, take that wrong path for themselves, then they are made easy for him when they go after one big evil to the another bigger evil and then to the still bigger evil they go forward so actually this is the habit of Allah فِي قُلُوبِهِمْ مَرَضٌ فَزَادَهُمُ اللَّهُ مَرَضًا Allah has increased them in their disease وَلَهُمْ عَزَابٌ عَلِيمٌ and there for them is a very painful torment بِمَا كَانُوا يَقْسِبُونَ on the basis of because of the lie that they had been telling because they were saying we are moments, they were not moments. This was the, the lie that they were saying, they were telling. <laughs>